I realize I haven't made a um, YouTube video in a while, and that's in part because I've been doing some field work um, and uh, been out and about and haven't recorded anything that I wanted to put up onto YouTube. So I thought I'd, you know, quickly make a YouTube video um, about some of the gear that I take out in the field, for those of you who are interested. And um, so we'll start kind of with the, the really critical things to take out. The first thing you need to take out into the field is a hat. Come here. Come here, show me your hat. A good hat. <laughs> a good hat. So a good hat is important uh, because you want to block the sun uh, from getting uh, on your face and you can get pretty bad uh, sunburn, especially if you're working in the desert. Um, and the hat that I usually grab, this is a Tilly hat, and I like the Tilly hat because it has a pocket up here, and I can stick a patch of sunscreen in there, because that's the next thing to have is sunscreen. To make sure you don't get sunburned. Um, then the next thing you need, and this is the most <laughs> critical thing, is a rock hammer. <laughs> and this is the rock hammer I take out in the field. This is a, a, a Eswin um, rock hammer. Um, this one is called a hard rock um, rock hammer because it has the pointed end. The, uh, and I just usually put it in my belt, or I have a belt loop here that I put it on. Um, the other one that you can take out is this one. This is the soft rock rock hammer. Uh, this one's different from this one in that it has uh, uh, sort of a chisel end, and that's great for splitting shales. So this one would be a great one to have if you are um, looking for fossil plants in particular. Um, but it also could be useful if you're looking for invertebrate fossils. I tend to like the, the hard rock one because it does have this point, and that can get you kind of to ch help chisel out things. Um, they have a regular hammer end, which is really useful. So you can take one if you have two hammers, and knock the other one into place to knock out rocks. So those are those are pretty critical that you're going to have on you at all times. Um, I've recently gotten into a much bigger hammer. Uh, this is also made by uh, S-Twin. And this one's really nice. This one's kind of modeled off of a, a pick that was actually invented where I'm doing field work right now, um, which is up in the Washakie Basin where O.C. Marsh uh, began collecting. He came out here in 1872 to collect fossils uh, for the Yale Peabody Museum. And when he was out here, he, uh, they had, at that time they had miner's picks, which if you've seen those are really big. They have uh, basically points on either side. And he came up with, um, with a design that's kind of similar to this. It's a little different, but um, it became known as the marsh pick. And this pick is really nice. Um, even has the Geo Paleo pick. And what's really nice about this one is a couple things. It's a little bit longer, which is great. You can really strike into it. You can also use it kind of as a walking stick, which is nice. It's got a nice sharp end here, and then it's got kind of a flat end here, which is great for splitting things. So it's got the both features. The one downside is you, you don't have that chisel uh, hammer effect that you have with these smaller ones. Um, but the other nice thing about this is you can actually dig out a lot of dirt and rocks and stuff with this end uh, fairly quickly, so it acts kind of like a little bit like a shovel. Um, and this is all one solid piece, so it's really solid and sturdy. So these are these are great um, great rock hammers to take out in the field. I usually take a satchel with me, and you always want to take plenty and lots and lots of water. Uh, water, um, if you have sunscreen, a hat, water, you're you're usually going to be pretty good. Um, I usually take my satchel, and inside my satchel, I will carry um, a first aid kit. This is one that I kind of put together after attending a um, course through Knowles, which is a wilderness um, first aid program um, offered here in Wyoming. But there's also courses uh, across the country that you can enroll in. And this I kind of designed as my own sort of things that I that I go to. The things that I um, that I find that I, I needed in the past. So I'll go through really quickly what's in here. Um, the first thing I'll mention, and this is my newest thing that I've added in here. Let's see if I can find it. 
and that is a um, a spot. This is a Gen 3. Um, this is my newest thing to put in here. Usually I don't carry one of these, but I've recently decided to carry them in part because, you know, I've, I've had to get help in the past, and so this is good if you get stranded somewhere. Um, basically, this is a GPS um, signal that you can send out, and you can program it to signal out. Um, you can uh, press a button and single, single signal your position to um, search and rescue if you get in a bind. You can also press it to try to get roadside assistance. Uh, let people know where you are. So it sends out a GPS where they can find out exactly where you are. And you can let people know where you're camping. And this is useful, especially if you want to communicate with your family. Um, it's been, um, I know a number of people who have been rescued um, using something like this. Um, I usually just carried my cell phone and would just call out if, there, if I could get to cell reception. Um, but now I just carry this, and this is nice because I can let people know where we are, especially if you're trying to describe it to people. Um, they can just click on a, a map and it sends them to Google Maps and they can see where you are, which is really useful. Um, the other thing I carry with me is if you're in an area where there's rattlesnakes or venomous snakes, you want to take a, a, bite, a snake bite kit. Um, rattlesnakes um, occasionally do bite people, and so you want to carry... Um, this is a cold pack. And then I have tape and I have a bandana. So with these three things, you can wrap up a snake bite and get it really cold and wrap it up real tight. Get to a hospital um, and get it treated and that prevents the venom from moving, getting it cold, uh, cold temperature. I also carry um, a couple important things in here. A knife, uh, which is always handy to have, and then a flashlight. Flashlights are really important if you get lost because you can still be walking in the night and being looking around. If you don't have a flashlight and you're trying to find your way back to camp or someplace like that, it can be dangerous. The other nice thing about a flashlight is people can see it at night uh, if you're in the desert. The desert's really dark, and if you see somebody, a little flashlight bobbing along, I've rescued people with a flashlight, which is really important to carry with you. Check the batteries. The other thing I'll throw in here, um, in addition to the flashlight, because your batteries might die, is um, these little light sticks. If you break these open and shine some light at night, you can see these from great distances. Um, and especially if they're these are yellow and green, um, and get that light going and kind of up in a tree or a bush, people can see that, which is really cool. So those are important things to throw in here. Um, I throw a poncho in case you get caught out in the rain, and a emergency survival uh, blanket that you can wrap up in. Now I'll warn you, if you ever spend a night in the desert of Wyoming at night, it can get pretty chilly, especially depending on what time of year. Um, the closer you're in the fall and spring, it can get really, really cold. I've spent nights uh, out without with <laughs> emergency blankets and it doesn't really keep you that warm. <laughs> but they're nice to have. It's something. thing in here to have, down here, is water purification tablets. Um, and I've actually found these really useful. There's lots of other things you can use, but water purification table tablets are really great. If you run out of water, um, and you can find some water in the desert, that's the critical thing, you can put these in, and you can fill your water container, because that's the other thing you want to take out with you, is a, is a water container. Make sure you have plenty of water. And then you can add this, shake it, and then you have some um, purified water. You have to wait 30 minutes that's a great thing to add to this. Pumps, you know, they're big, they're bulky, um, they're great for maybe backpacking and stuff, but they take a long time. And I've been out in the wilderness and ran out of water and trying to get water, and I found that tablets work so much better than trying to pump water through something, and you're super, you're dying of thirst, and you're sitting there trying to get this water clean, and it's just it, it, frustrating. <laughs> Water tablets, just throw it in there, rinse it out, follow the instructions. And then I have various medications in here. One that I find very useful to have is antidiarrheal, um, as well as some antihistamines like Benadryl, and then um, uh, things like aspirin, uh, ibuprofen, um, cold medicine, things like that. Um, those I use quite a bit. And then I have matches that I have in here. And then I usually carry also um, in this bag, a um, eye wash, or um, in case you get something in your eye, and we used that just yesterday. So I'll have to put some of that in there um, 
as well. So this stuff, don't feel bad. You feel good if you if you have to use this, um, that you have it. And I always carry this stuff with me. Now this is kind of big. Some people carry a lot less with them uh, when they're out and about. But I find this first aid kit really useful. And it just there's a good sense you know to have it uh, if you need any of this stuff. The other thing you might want to take um, in addition to this is uh, toilet paper, uh, which is very useful. So in my satchel, a couple other things. Notebook, um, a Brunton compass, um, an Allidade level that I use, um, a camera. I use this, uh, this is a Fuji uh, camera, which is waterproof, which is great. If you have a waterproof camera, digital camera, it's great. You don't have to worry about water. Um, so if you're stuck out in the rain, which happens a lot. Um, and then I also have a hand lens to look at tiny little fossils. Um, so that's in my satchel there. Um, the next thing I carry on my belt is a Tremble. A Tremble is a really fancy uh, GPS unit that records very precise localities. It's probably overkill for many people who do uh, amateur paleontology, but very useful. I use this for surveying. It's kind of like a little personal computer. You can record your GPS units pretty in really good precision. You can attach a um, an antenna to this to get really precise uh, positions. But this is great for for doing survey where you're finding stuff and you want to record where you found it. Very exact. I wish the old timers had GPS units because trying to find their old locality sometimes is a challenge. All right, and then um, and then I have my boxes that I take. These are things that I pull out when I do find something really cool. And this first box here is my glue box. Now let's see what's in the glue box. So I take a lot of bags, like tons and tons of bags out in the field to put fossils in. Uh, when I'm collecting mammals, if I have lots of toilet paper and lots of little vials like medicine vials or old film vials. Um, those I'll just throw fossils in as I find them and then put a label in there and they're great for for storing stuff. So I have lots and lots of those. When you're out and about you're gonna want to um, maybe apply some glue to the fossils that you find. Um, sort of the standard glue that you use is uh, Acroid B72, Acroid B72, um, and it comes in these pellets, and you take the pellets and you throw them in like a dropper like this with some acetone, and you can mix up glue, and you can mix it up to any thickness that you want, which is really great, and then you can apply it to your fossil. The other nice thing um, I've been doing, it works, it depends, to empty out some nail polish, um, and then I fill that up with some of this uh, B72 Acrylate. And nail polish is nice because it comes with a little brush. The one downside I found is that sometimes the, the lids on these things uh, usually glue the lid down onto them. But uh, I'll do those to apply like little bits of it to glue pieces of fossils together. Um, and then in a pinch I use some of the uh, some of the super glues. Um, these are uh, cyanoacrylate uh, um, glues, uh, the super glue family. And these uh, are not as archival. A lot of people kind of uh, poo poo these as, as using them for paleontology. Um, the nice thing about them though is that they do um, form really strong bonds and glue things together really well. The other thing I'll carry with me. Um, sometimes in this box, but I was using them yesterday, so they're in my satchel, is um, uh, tools like these. These are nice little um, dental picks that have been different ends to them. These are really useful when you're dealing with delicate stuff and you're trying to work things out of the rock. Um, sometimes if you have something that you can level, uh, different brushes, I have a bunch of brushes in here as well. Uh, you can use those to brush off the fossils and kind of get in there and expose it and then apply some glue. Once you got your gear all glued, or your fossils all glued up and ready to pull it out of the ground, we go to a different box. 
And this is my jacketing box for jackets. So this is if you find something, especially big, if you find something really big. More toilet paper. Um, I use these uh, trench shovels. They're really great. Developed in World War. They're just super awesome. Uh, great for digging out fossils. Also great for making stratigraphic sections and digging out dirt to see the rocks. And they fold up really nicely. They do pinch you though. Um, tow rope, which is always good to have in the vehicle. Um, tape measure to measure out your site. Um, now, if you're working in a quarry, you're going to need goggles to protect your eyes. Lots of chisels. Lots of work gloves. Things like trowels, little shovels. Dusk masks, knee pads. And the first thing you want to do after you got your stuff glued down is apply lots of paper towel around it. So I got lots of paper towel in here. And then we take Oscar Paris right here and I put it in a bowl with water, add that in there, and then that uh, mixes up and then you cut out pieces of burlap and apply burlap to make a fossil jacket. And I have some videos of me doing that up on my YouTube channel. Um, so this is my jacketing. This I bring out when I find something big and I can carry it out. One kind of really important thing to have is uh, tin foil. And so this is some wonderful tin foil that I use. Tin foil is great, aluminum foil. Um, you can wrap up things and it holds the fossil together. Uh, sometimes you can use aluminum foil underneath your jacket and that helps when you get back to the lab to help separate them out. They're really useful if you just take aluminum foil and even like duct tape and wrap those around, you can make a little nice small jacket. And they're very useful in the field. So this is basically the stuff I take out in the field with me. Be sure to take plenty of water. Um, this is kind of the gear that I have that if I ever need something, I can grab it um, out of my vehicle when I'm out collecting fossils. So uh, thanks for watching and hopefully you learned a little something.